Generalized method of moments is a popular technique for estimating certain kinds of panel models. Some researchers seem to believe that, that this technique has some superpowers for dealing with endogeneity, but it is just an estimation technique like any others and uh, it can be applied to also contexts other than panel studies. Let's take a look at what this technique actually does and under which kind of scenarios it might be useful. So generalized method of moments is used for estimating this kind of models. So we have our exogenous variables that we use as instruments x1 and x3 and then we have endogenous variables that have, may have correlated errors and also there may be simultaneity between these um, or two-way relationships between these endogenous variables. To understand what generalized method of moments does, we need to first understand what method of moments does and then uh, to do that we need to understand what is a, a moment in statistics. So uh, Wikipedia is pretty useful here and if you want to know more there are some great videos on YouTube for example I, I like particularly this video here. The uh, idea of a moment is that it is basically a distance and uh, the first moment is, is mean and uh, mean is basically uh, the average distance from zero and the second moment of, of a variable is uh, the uh, square average square distance from the mean so that's the variance and uh, so on so we have skewness we have kurtosis and then we have others when we that other quantities that describe distributions but for method of moments uh, estimation we need to understand that moments basically refer to uh, variances and covariances in this context. So uh, we have means, variances and covariances and that's what we need to understand about moments. If you want to know more then go to YouTube. There is lots of great material that you can use to learn. So uh, how does this technique actually work? So what's the, uh, what's the idea behind this equation here and uh, how does it allow us to estimate this model here? Let's take a look at the equation a bit closer. So the equation here has a couple of things. We need to understand what the z is. We need to understand what this, uh, this y minus x beta is and what's the, the expectation. So z are the instrument variables. In our system model here, instruments are the x's. And then y minus x beta is simply the error term. So we have the actual observed value minus the fitted value in the population and the difference is the error term. So that's the error term and then this full expectation we, we multiply two things together and we take the expectation that's roughly the covariance. So that is the covariance between instrument variables and the error term and uh, we set that to zero. So that's an assumption. Assumption in this technique is that the error terms here are uncorrelated with the instrument. So that's generally the assumption with any instrument of variable technique. So how does that allow us to estimate the model? Well the estimation criterion for method of moments is that we uh, find the betas so that the covariances between uh, the instruments and all residuals are zero. So uh, every residual is uncorrelated with every instrument and we could uh, do mathematical optimization to find uh, the betas and calculate residuals and actually calculate these correlations but in practice there is a closed form solution an equation that gives us uh, the, the, the betas that satisfy these constraints. But this method of moments has one disadvantage it is that if the model is over identified then a solution is unlikely to exist and the reason being that we have more constraints than what we need for estimation and it is unlikely that redundant constraints are exact, exactly the same in any small sample. So to address that we have generalized method of moments and uh, generalized method of moments look similar so we have the method of moments are uh, kind of here so we multiply instrument with uh, the, uh, the residual and uh, but we have also this, this w here. So what's the meaning of this equation? And, and the meaning of these equations is, is roughly that we minimize the weighted sum of squares of these uh, covariances between instruments and residuals. And uh, how the weights are defined it's not relevant at this point. But basically we, we try to get every instrument to be uncorrelated with every residual. We cannot do that generally for over identified models in small samples 
So there's always some sampling variation that ca causes those correlations to be non-zero. So we try to get as close to zero correlations as possible and then uh, we weight each correlation a, a bit differently depending on their importance. Another equation that actually gives the estimates is here. Understanding what this equation actually does is, is not useful, but understanding that we have an equation, have a closed form solution for this estimation technique is useful. They are, if we compare generalized method of moments against another modern method, the maximum likelihood, in maximum likelihood we have to iteratively find, uh, using numerical optimization, we have to find a maximum of a likelihood function. And uh, that can go wrong. So there are things that can, can, can go wrong in numerical optimization. Here we don't need optimization. We just calculate our, our estimates using that equation and this can pretty much always be calculated. So with GMM you're guaranteed to get results whereas if you use maximum likelihood estimation and your model and data are weird then uh, you may not get any estimates. And uh, then the optimal choice of W depends on, on OLS residuals, two says least cross residuals. So it has been shown that there is an optimal choice for the W and uh, we call that choice the optimal GMM. Most of the time when people use the term GMM they refer to the optimal version instead of some suboptimal choice of W. This generalized method of moment has been shown to be a, a more general case of two states least squares and three states least squares. So if we choose W appropriately then we get two states least squares estimates or three states least squares estimates. So this basically uh, in a way obsoletes both techniques. However using two states least squares is a lot simpler than using this technique so maybe that has some use. We'll get to that a bit later in this video. The uh, optimal GMM is more efficient than two states uh, least squares and three states least squares. So one might ask why are we using three states least squares at all and why do econometrics books talk about this technique. The reason is that this was introduced before GMM and because it has been around people use it and therefore uh, you need to understand what it does to be able to uh, read what others have done. There is also another statistical reason which is that in small samples three states least squares might, may actually be more efficient than GMM but we really cannot say anything uh, general about it. It has to be uh, established one sen for each scenario separately which is of course uh, not feasible for a normal researcher. So this consideration uh, gives us a rule of thumb that when you consider estimating a full system using either of these techniques uh, then uh, always use GMM. So GMM is better than two states least squares and three states least squares if you know that the system is correctly specified. However, we just identified models if your decrease of freedom is zero then all these produce the exact same result in which case you should use the simplest one which is the two states least squares. But importantly uh, using these rules of thumb you would never need to use three states least squares. But there is some something to two states least squares that uh, makes people recommend its use. And also Woolridge, uh, who I borrow here heavily, says that two states least squares is actually uh, a pretty good thing to have in your toolbox. The reason is that this is a robust technique. So the model does not need to be correctly specified for, for all parts because you can estimate it uh, equation at a time using two states least squares. And then one small misspecification in one part of the model only affects that part of the model instead of making all estimates inconsistent. So two states least squares is a good technique to know for diagnostic purposes and if you want to go and, and study a, a small part of your larger model. 